As an example, let's return to the enum-driven state machine which we created in our last state machine example. Here we recall what happened when we went to add the idle case so that we could handle the run button. Recall that we had to manually change and replace each of the instances of the constants which refer to this enum. So let's begin by modifying this example. We'll start on the front panel and take the control which we already have existing, select it, and from the edit menu choose Customize Control. In this case, all we need to do is select the control to be a type def and then save it. Then when we close it, we're prompted from LabVIEW whether we want to replace the original control with the one we just created. The answer is yes. So now we see that our type def is here. If we were to right click and try to edit the entries, we notice that we cannot because in order to edit them we must edit the type def. So now what we need to do is again we need to modify, but this time for the last time, our VI to replace each of these constants with the constant pertaining to the type def. It's important to understand that although these constants were created from the original control, because it was not a type def at the time, there is no linkage remaining between them. And that's why we see we have a coercion dot here. I'm going to right click on the type def and choose create constant. We're going to use this constant now to replace each of the constants we have within our program. So I'm going to delete that one. Again, use the trick of control drag to make a duplicate. Just begin replacing all of these. Initialize goes to idle. Already done the idle case. Acquire goes to analyze. Save goes either to exit. Or back to initialize. We observe our coercion dots gradually disappearing until finally we're done. So if we run the code we're going to observe exactly the same behavior as before. We go to the initialize case which then puts us into the idle case and then we run with the choice to rerun or the ch choice to cancel. Of course, now the reason we did all this was so that we could easily update and never have to do what we just had to go through, which was to replace all of those constants. Let's perform a test. What we want to do is let's add two stages of analysis. Right now we have a series of states, initialize, idle, acquire, analyze, then save and exit. Let's add analyze2. So the way we need to do that is to actually start by editing our type def. So we right click on it and we choose open type def. It's also important to notice at this point that any of these constants are also linked to the type def. So if we were to right click on them, we can also access the exact same type def. From here, we're going to do edit items. And just before the save state, we're going to insert the case analyze2. Click OK. Save the type def and close. So what we see here is that our code is still not been broken. There are no coercion dots, there are no broken wires, and if we were to click on any one of our constants, we see that we have our analyze2 case present. If we were to run this code right now, there would be no difference in the behavior, because although we've added it to the enum and to the type def of the enum, we haven't explicitly handled it in the cases. So what we want to do is have our analyze case, instead of going right to save, 
Let's have the Analyze case go to Analyze 2, duplicate this case, and have Analyze 2 go to Save. So we're going to see now with this simple modification when we run the VI, it goes from Initialize to Idle, we run it, it goes Acquire, Analyze, Analyze 2, and then Save. So we can see immediately the power of this, that we can modify our states add new states, remove states relatively easily without having to go back and modify each of the constants everywhere.